Okay. So this is the second part of week six of data mining. And we are looking at specific classification methods. The first part of this week's videos looked at decision trees, which are sort of their classification algorithms that your outcome is a labeled variable and it makes a visual split tree with criteria that it's split on based on the label category that you use as an outcome and all of the X variables that you throw as an income. I mean, an, an input, sorry. Um, and so decision trees have the advantage in that they don't, they're not really like mathematically picky. You can basically kind of throw any input variables in them. Um, you don't have to normalize your system metrics. They're relatively easy to interpret because you do get a visual output like this. Um, and they are a classification method. But another classification method is the next one, which is one of my favorites, which is the K nearest neighbors. Now this is a classification method. Don't confuse this with cluster analysis. Um, that's not what it's doing, despite it sort of being plotted like a cluster analysis. Um, so K nearest neighbors is a classification algorithm where observations are assigned to classes literally based on how far they are away from the neighbors. Um, and so the neighbors have known classes and the stuff you're trying to classify doesn't, and mathematical distance is measured, and literally things are classified based on where they are closest to according to distance metrics. Um, it's actually a pretty simple algorithm when you see it in action. K is the number of neighbor points. Now don't be confused with K means clustering when K is the number of clusters. K is the number of neighbor points used to make this determination. That'll explain, okay? K nearest neighbors works best with a relatively small number. If you think about it, you only want to be classified based on your close neighbors, like the people far away. That's, you don't necessarily want that. In this case, your input variables need to all be quantitative and normalized. Um, you do want to have z-scores because we are using distances here. Like I said, many data mining algorithms do use distance, um, the clustering, and now this classification method. And so you don't want to have that impact of the scale of measurement. Um, so you want to use normalized these scores, which were covered in week. I hate this. I think it was three, somewhere around there. But anyways, yeah. Um, so let me explain K-nearest neighbors. So here is some data on height and weight. So x-axis is height, y-axis is weight. And then we have adults and children that are adults are red and children are blue and the plot is coded and you can see that um, for the most part like down here is clearly children and down here is clearly adults this area in here is where you have this sort of like transition thing going on um so this is just a data set a label data set plotted and then the labels are nicely plotted there so this is just taking the data and standardizing it. And the reason we want to standardize it is height and weight. Like weight is typically a bigger number than height. So if we didn't standardize it, then weight would have like a bigger impact on the, cl on the classification, which we don't want. Um, so we want to put these on standardized z-scores, which is what this did. Um, again, the z-score is just you take the average weight and you measure the standardization and you do z equals the data value minus the mean average divided by the standard deviation and you get these z-scores. And the z-scores indicate how far the different data values are from the average. So for the weight, the first one is 0.61. That means that this 170 is 0.61 standard deviations above the mean. The 0.85 is negative 1.35, which means that it's 1.35 standard deviations below the mean. 54 is going to be like a lot below the mean, like negative two standard deviation below. So that's what z scores do. They measure all of the data in terms of how far it is from the average of that particular data with respect to the standard deviation, and you get these standardized scores. Which at this point, it wouldn't even matter if the weight were in pounds or kilograms. Where if we did weight in kilograms, we get the same z scores if we had the same population, um, which is something I illustrated in week. I believe it was week three or four. I forgot which one. Sorry. Um, so we want to do our K-nearest neighbors algorithm on these standardized numbers, not on our original data. Okay. So what is K-nearest neighbors exactly? It's actually, I think, the easiest algorithm we learn in this course. Um, with K-nearest neighbors, what you do is you have a new point um, 
of known height and weight, but not known if it's child or adult. So we're trying to classify like an additional line here. We don't know whether it's an adult or child. And all you do is you choose the K nearest neighbors and you determine um, how the new point gets classified based on how close it is to the other, to the K nearest neighbors. Now K should be, and this is illustrating that. So this is the original data. Plot it again. Um, there's nothing in here. See, now I take this new point and I want to know whether this new point should be classified as a child, the blue ones, or an adult, the red ones. Um, so what you do is this. You look at, now K is the number of neighbors. This is really easy once you actually like see it in action. So if I use K equals three nearest neighbors, two of them are blue, one of them is red. So based on this, I would go with the majority and classify it as blue or a child. That's really all there is to K nearest neighbors. Um, you actually sit in, and measure the distances between these, but this is going to be the minimum. And so this is going to be, um, this is going to go with the blue. You also, when you do K nearest neighbors, you don't want to choose an even number. You want K to, K is almost always three or five. Um, technically you can use other values of K. I don't really know why you would. You don't want to use one because that's not enough. Typically K nearest neighbors, you base your decisions on either three or five. You don't want to use two, and here's why, because if I would use two in this case, I'd get like two red and two blue, and then what do you do if it's a 50-50? Like you don't want to have that. You want to have a majority with an odd number. There's either going to be, with K is three, there's either going to be two or one um, for each group. So you, you want to be careful and not do like um, an even number and get a tie, because then what do you do? Um, so a good choice is to use three nearest neighbors the algorithm calculates the distance of three neighbors and it determines what class the three neighbors are. So it would determine this one, this one, and this one, and the two closest neighbors are the children. So that's what it would do is it would determine that it's the child. Um, so the new point is classified with the neighbor majority class, which is two thirds of the neighbors are blue. So it's gonna classify with the blue. And that literally is what K nearest neighbors does. It's actually a nifty little neat algorithm. It sounds so fancy and complicated, but that's all it's doing. Um, it's really simple. Another good choice would have been five nearest neighbors. Three or five is typically what I've always seen. Um, you always want to use an odd number. You don't want to use an even number because you don't want to have, you need to have a majority class. Um, so if you have four neighbors, you could have two and two, and then you don't have a majority class, you have a tie. You don't want that. So here I'm going with five, same, same situation, same new point. Now again, I have, um, there's five neighbors, three are blue, two are red. So this is again gonna go with the blue, but that's what the five neighbors would do, okay? Um, I do wanna do this on normalized values. I don't wanna do this on scaled values that are not normalized. Um, once again, typically we're gonna use Euclidean distance. That's your standard distance from the distance formula that was the Pythagorean theorem. Um, you could use other distances, but um, as mentioned in, again, I forgot which week it was, but we talked one week about the different kind of dif distance metrics, but um, yeah. And, and that was, oh, sorry, in the clustering lesson, which actually, when I originally did this program, I meant to do the classification before the clustering, but it turned out that it worked better to do the clustering before. So um, we've already had the, the, the distance, um, the talk about different kinds of distance metrics, but typically Euclidean distance is what you would select for this. Um, K can technically go from one to N where N is the number of data values. So if you have a data set with, um, I think this one has 10, technically you could do K equals 10, but that would be basically really stupid because, um, you just be selecting the whole data set and then you just go with the majority for that. That wouldn't make any sense. So three or five typically is the number that you use for the number of neighbors that you use. This is not three clusters. We are not clustering here. Even though I drew a circle around this, the circle does not indicate a cluster. The circle indicates the five nearest neighbors to the new point um, and just basically lassos them. But we are not clustering these five points together. We are just looking for this new point here. And then these are the five neighbors and three of the five are blue and that's the majority. So we're going to classify this one as blue. Um, that's what this is doing. Okay. 
Cool. So that was the K nearest neighbors. I do want to separate this out because I don't want to start talking about this next section. So I'm going to keep like the different classification techniques their own video.